threat diplomacy as is current between the U.S. and North Korea clearly defines the fact that we have to have world law to replace weapons of mass destruction. Fools and failures in charge of such things can only lead to world disaster. We all know it. We all believe that is true. And yet the people and the nations refuse to put them away in a way that uh, is safe for all citizens. In other words, we have to dismantle them, destroy the facilities that make them, and make sure that they don't come back. The only way we can do that is through world law. World law means that we will govern the actions of our leaders by the law we, the people of this world, create. It is that simple. We tell them what they can and they cannot do. And we enforce that with a multi-nation policing force whose only job is to intervene where a leader of any nation, and that means any nation, gets out of line. We have to have law governing our world. We are eight billion people more or less, and rising at an incredible rate. We have no possibility of survival if things don't change. So you can either choose world law, or you can let fools and failures decide your fate. A fool is someone who knows better, who knows the consequences cannot possibly be worth the reality of being wrong, but does it anyway. And a failure is someone whose only objective is to get more power for themselves, regardless of the cost to even an entire nation. You know, neither is worthy of leadership. That's just the facts. World law will let us decide for ourselves as a world, as humanity itself in one simple vote whether or not we allow the planet to be destroyed. No more global conference conferencing, no more global leaders deciding, no more nations getting out of a contract. We the people decide if you are going to obey our rules for this planet and our rules for this planet must include life for the planet comes first. There aren't any other solutions. There aren't any other complaints or excuses. Life for this planet comes first or we all die because we are so many people now that, that our world can no longer sustain us. Not without very significant change. You are, by the calculation of what nations uh, uh, claim is their agricultural land, one person per acre on the world, and that acre has to, you know, feed the insects and the cattle and everything else too. Of course, there is forest land and things like that, but that is being cut down at a rate that will simply uh, cause it to completely disappear, along with all the species who are involved with it. You are, you know, destroying the chains of life. Insects are a base food chain on land. For many, many things. Without them, all those things go extinct. Because you have to have food. Ocean food supplies, such as the food that grows underneath ice flows or originates underneath ice flows and feeds a large part of the ocean life in one form or another, or trawlers who take every fish from a particular part of the sea so that when predator fish come to feed there, there is nothing left for them, and that causes their extinction as well. You know, the, the list is extremely long. Poisons everywhere. Literally. Uh, it's by the trillion ton. You wouldn't believe it. Anyway, the moment is 
that uh, that we face uh, another crisis in world leadership. As always, there seems to be always something going wrong. That's because leaders feel they don't have to obey any law. Well, if we create a world court, and if we, the people of this world, create a policing agency that will uh, corral the leaders and bring them to our court so that we will judge them if they did or did not obey the law we set before them to be a leader or a ruler, then we will uh, punish them accordingly. That is our right. It is our world, not theirs. And we have to uh, enforce you know, our own survival or we will not survive. The power of weapons of mass destruction in all kinds, in all types, uh, are not survivable. Uh, it's not going to happen. And it only takes one tiny little incident. Even a, an electrical malfunction doesn't matter. One incident and the whole world can disappear before your eyes in a very short time. One university scientist releasing biological weapons of mass destruction that they made themselves and an enormous amount of life will die. This is a very serious situation in every concern because without law there is no peace. There's only going to be war. We have to make this world lawful and we cannot do that unless we rule our leaders ourselves by creating laws they must obey. And among the many many topics of consideration that we must enforce is that university scientists government leaders cannot experiment with uh, an entire world. They cannot risk our lives as a world. They cannot try to bring fusion, which has been proven to be an utter lie. At the Lawrence Livermore Laboratories in San Francisco, they tried desperately to prove that they could create heat by combining hydrogen into helium, and they failed. And the sun produces no helium to speak of anyway, which proves uh, beyond any doubt that they're, they're just lying. The reality is, if they do ignite a nuclear fire, which is clearly what is on the sun, if they do ignite a nuclear fire on Earth, we have absolutely no possibility of putting it out. None. It burns atoms. It's 10 million degrees. We can't even approach it. And it will literally suck the oceans dry as it produces a plume of flame that goes beyond the moon from this Earth. That's the price of igniting that fire. And their plan is that there's not enough gravity here on Earth to sustain the fire, so it'll just put itself out. That is their only plan. Your life, your future, your world, your child is all dependent upon the ignition of their fire going out itself. Atoms just deciding that they don't want to be on fire anymore, I guess. Do you, know, you suppose that might not be right? Do you suppose there are consequences here that might be bad for an entire planet and even the solar system itself? Another sun on Earth impacts the entire solar system. Even the Bible has a prophecy that says, if you, uh, you know, the great abomination is threatening all life on earth, threatening the planet itself, threatening even the solar system, and there is no greater threat than igniting nuclear fire on earth. This is not an explosion that will simply disappear on its own. This is fire, and you know what fire is. It's not a game. It's not a contest. It's not an experiment. It's gambling with every living thing on the planet, even the solar system. There is no abomination greater than that. 
and your leaders chose to make that experiment and fund it. And there are machines running and more machines coming, all trying to ignite nuclear fire on Earth. It is a wonderful heat source. Take a look at the sun. 91 million miles away, it'll burn your skin in summer. You want that here? Go ahead and look at it for any length of time. It will blind you. You want that here? Ozone gone, radiation will kill you. you want that here? Think for yourself. Eight billion people can tell a tiny few leaders what they will or will not do. We have the power. Literally, we have the power to stop them. All you have to do is make them stop. And that means you communicate, you organize, you just stand up and say, you ain't gonna do this no more. Turn off their electric, turn off their supplies, throw them in jail, whatever it takes. World law must come quickly or the planet will die and us with it.